bloody hell. These things are not easy to master. Welcome to Brand Next Reviews. This one we're going to be looking at the films of Bruce Lee. And uh, we're going to do a part two as well. We're going to be looking at uh, this book that I got recently, which kind of covers a lot of memorabilia. So uh, for now, anyway, this is part one. So like I say, we're going to be looking at the last few films he did before he died. And uh, we'll kind of just take it from there, I guess. So uh, enjoy. <coughs> What a legend. It's a shame that he never fully realised his legacy, in his own lifetime anyway, as he died in July 1973, just as his film career was at least starting to reach new levels, not only in the Hong Kong cinema arena, but also in the USA, where he had gained a decent level of recognition, albeit in bit parts and so on. While Bruce Lee was actually a well-loved actor from a very young age, his career pretty much grew with him, so by the early 70s his major films were really something special. Let's take a look at four of his films that he did just before he died, the four main films that are really the ones that stand out. The Big Boss in 1971, directed by Lo Wai, or Lo Wee, I don't know how to pronounce that, with assistance from Bruce Lee. Also known as Fists of Fury, as Bruce Lee's next film would be called Fist of Fury. Yeah, that's not confusing at all, is it? These films have no connection plot-wise. I'll get to Fist of Fury next, but for now, The Big Boss is basically about his character Cheng Chao An, a man from China who moves to Thailand to live with his cousins. He gets a job in an ice factory, and it quickly becomes apparent that the ice factory is being used to smuggle drugs. Innocent workers that have gotten too close to the truth have been disappeared, and when another two more vanish, the workforce start demanding the truth, going on strike and so on. Bruce Lee's character pretty much gets promoted to a managerial role by the corrupt big boss of the factory. They figure that he might go along with them and perhaps placate the workforce and get them to forget that their colleagues had vanished. This is why he gets promoted. Bruce Lee is then put in an awkward position and he even begins to border on selling out. But he quickly sees sense and quicks the asses of the evil bastards that are working for the big boss. Well, working for the corrupt side of his business. This, as I say, was the first major film Bruce Lee uh, it has various titles, recuts, etc. In fact, my version released by Hong Kong Legends and Golden Harvest. Pink Floyd fans may recognise some of the music cues uh, that have been taken from Dark Side of the Moon, the album, particularly the track called Time. Anyway, if you've not seen this, uh, like all the others I'm covering here, I definitely recommend it. Uh, as always, avoid the English dub. If you're going to watch a foreign film, watch it in its original language, even if they are sometimes dubbed between Mandarin to Cantonese or vice versa. Anyway, the next film, as I say, was Fist of Fury in 1972. Sometimes known in countries such as the USA as The Chinese Connection, a play on the popular French Connection film with Gene Hackman. Now, uh, it's a bit darker than the previous film, based kind of loosely, I think, on real events. It deals with the whole Chinese, Japanese, Hong Kong tensions back in the day. Bruce Lee plays a martial arts student whose former mentor was murdered. There is a massive theme of racism, hatred and injustice in this film, although it does have some funny moments too, such as the part where Bruce Lee disguises himself as a telephone repairman in order to gain access to the enemy's lair. The action in this film is amazing. Um, I really think that this one outdid its predecessor. What is great about this, and all of Bruce Lee's films to be honest, uh, is in a, a modern day context nowadays you have stuntmen, CGI, clever camera angles that conceal or sometimes zoom in way too much during fight scenes. Um, we've even had that wave of wire stunts around the time of The Matrix which often look ridiculous. Bruce Lee's action was most of the time showing you exactly what he could do blow for blow and you really felt you were getting to see this without any kind of camera trickery such as we have it in the modern day all too often. Anyway, kind of rewinding a bit, Fist of Fury as I say is a great film with a powerful theme and uh, it's, it's just a small bunch of downtrodden people who fight back and stick together despite the odds. It's been kind of done in, in a lot of films but it's done really well here. One key scene in the film is where Bruce Lee 
tries to enter a park but is stopped by a guard who draws his attention to a racist sign that says no dogs and Chinese allowed. Classic act from Bruce Lee, kicking the sign in midair really sums this film up. So next, in the same year, we have Way of the Dragon, directed by Bruce Lee, good man. A fairly basic plot, but often the best films have a basic plot anyway, so I can't really begrudge it for that. Um, in a nutshell, Bruce Lee is sent to visit his relatives in Italy to protect them from a fairly brutal mafia organisation that wants their restaurant out of the way. This film is usually referred to as that one where he fights Chuck Norris. It's a pretty epic fight scene to be honest. It takes place in the Roman Colosseum. You may think that that's a bit pretentious, but seriously, I think these guys have earned it at this point. A lot of the film takes place in and around the back of the restaurants. We also get to see Lee fighting with two pairs of nunchucks. How he didn't crack himself in the knackers is a mystery to me. They are not easy things to work. Um, another great film anyway. Watch it again with the Chinese audio, not the English dub. Uh, now the film was initially billed as Return of the Dragon during its western release to tie in or perhaps try to deceptively cash in on the success of Enter the Dragon, which I'll get to in a minute. Both films have no continuity between each other. As I say, they did a similar thing with the, the Big Boss and Fist of Fury, calling the Big Boss Fists of Fury to make it sound like it tied in with Fist of Fury. All it did was lead to confusion. Anyway, Bruce Lee did begin to work on a film called Game of Death shortly after. That was the one where he wears the yellow jumpsuit, also worn by Uma Thurman in Kill Bill, probably more famously to be fair. Um, well, he mothballed that film when the chance came about to make the big budget and American, well, more American film Enter the Dragon emerged. Um, it was a good choice, possibly. Yeah, Enter, Dra Enter the Dragon is a masterpiece. Released in 1973, as I say, Enter the Dragon was more of an American film and really seemed to mark the beginning of what would have been a glorious career for Bruce Lee. Uh, smart action films through the 70s and beyond. I was just watching the new Expendables film yesterday, uh, Expendables 3 in cinemas, and I was just thinking, imagine if Bruce Lee was still around, and, uh, would he be in this film? Well, Enter the Dragon to me feels like it was his first really big break. Directed by uh, Robert Klaus, this is this one is about Lee, that's the name of the character that Bruce Lee plays. A martial artist who goes undercover to spy on a reclusive crime lord using his invitation to a tournament there as a cover. It has the feel of a James Bond film, especially towards the end where Lee finds himself in the heart of the criminal's lair and uh, has an epic fight with the top bad guy. The main villain in this is very much like a James Bond villain complete with a physical deformity, a missing hand that can be replaced by a number of add-ons like a hook for example. In the end fight scene he uses a razor sharp claw to fight Bruce Lee, leaving him scarred. It's another memorable and iconic image from this film. In the end Lee uses his philosophy, his heart, body and soul to defeat the enemy. See the film for yourself if you haven't already, it's easy if I don't explain it. Anyway, Bruce Lee died shortly before the film was released, though he did get to see a final cut, and from what I heard he was very happy with it. There is a director's cut also available on DVD and Blu-ray, which I'd recommend. So that was it. Well, there was the unfinished Game of Death, which I mentioned before, which uh, got a proper release a few years later, in the late 70s, reluctantly finished off, but it seems to be a shadow of what it could have been. I mean, how do you make a film where the main star is dead? It has been done before, but seriously. I mean, what are they going to do? I mean, kill him off and show footage of the real deceased Bruce Lee in his coffin? Oh, no, wait, they wouldn't. Yep, yep, they did, that's right. They actually kill off Bruce Lee's character in this film and use real footage of him dead in his open casket at his actual funeral. They only get a very brief glimpse, but still. Well... They kind of kill the character off, they don't really, it turns out it was actually a ploy so that he could go undercover. Kind of creepy though, as they staged his death by having him killed off on the set of a film. Killed by a real bullet that is supposed to be a blank. Hmm, I think I've heard that before. That's kind of what happened to Bruce Lee's son, Brandon Lee, in the 1993 film The Crow. Actually got killed on set by a real bullet. Coincidence? Game of Death, well this version was made almost 15 years, I think, before the Brandon Lee incident, so kind of weird. Anyway, that's a side issue. Um, other things uh, a lot of viewers have a problem with with this film, the 
redone version of, of the film using extra footage. They reused footage from Lee's other films wherever they could and it just looked really bad. In some cases they practically copied and pasted his face, his head, and redubbed bits and pieces here and there. Um, there's one bit that really stands out at the beginning of the film where Lee's supposed character has his back to this gangster while looking at him in a mirror. They literally took a, sh a, a photograph of Bruce Lee's face and just pasted it over the actor in one shot. It looks terrible! And the actor just kind of turns around and you can see he's clearly not the same guy. Um, there's also a controversy with the filmmakers using Chuck Norris's name in the opening credits. All they did was use footage from Way of the Dragon. Um, I, mean, I heard at one point that Chuck Norris actually filed a lawsuit or something as a result. Well, he did bloody right, to be honest. It was a really cheap trick to pull, in my opinion. That aside, anyway, the, the film isn't all that bad, uh, in my humble opinion. It has a John Barry score, John Barry being the composer who did all the majority of the early James Bond film scores. He did a really good job on this one, and uh, the standing actor did a, as good a job as he could really and uh, the other actors in the film are pretty good too. Now the film has a great payoff at the end as the footage that Bruce Lee shot is pretty much all at the end of the film so it's worth seeing through. It's just a real shame that this film has never completed as there was to be this whole theme of the warrior ascending up this tower and on each level he would be confronted by different types of fighters. Bruce Lee would have to adapt and use different techniques to overcome them. It would have been a very kind of metaphorical and philosophical theme. As I say, Bruce Lee's films were pretty clever. They weren't just action porn for martial arts fans. Well, they did what they could to make a finished movie with Game of Death in the absence of CGI and the whole thing with copying Bruce Lee's face onto another actor's face. As bad as it looked, it was understandable. I mean. I don't see, I mean I wouldn't have done that myself if I was making the film but I couldn't understand why they did it. Anyway, I mean it's not like they made a sequel to Game of Death and listed Bruce Lee as a cast member. Oh bloody hell! Yep, another one, they did the same thing, the same old tricks just like they used in the first. But again the film itself isn't that bad. The action is pretty spectacular and the finale of the film is, is like some kind of futuristic glorified sci-fi martial arts battle. It really has to be seen to be believed. Uh, give it a watch anyway if you're interested. Uh, there are some funny bits in the film which, <laughs> to be fair, I suspect weren't supposed to be funny, but uh, there you go. Now both Game of Death films come on DVD with extra footage, particularly the first film. Uh, it's, it's quite good, it's got a lot of the footage shot with Bruce Lee, which you can just watch on its own. As I say, there was all, all controversy with these films aside, they were pretty legendary, uh, for the better part. I see it's worth watching really. Like I said, there was the whole Kill Bill homage that filmmaker Quentin Tarantino used in 2003 with a yellow jumpsuit. Now shortly after Bruce Lee died, this crazy genre was spawned called Bruce Bloitation. Basically, filmmakers often unscrupulously cashed in on Lee's name in order to sell a shitty martial arts film or whatever. Titles such as Bruce Lee Fights Back From The Grave in 1967. I've not watched it but it starts out with this scene and then the rest of the film has zero to do with Bruce Lee. And then we have, oh god, clones of Bruce Lee. Do yourself a favour, do not watch this film, even if you're unlucky to be able to trace down a rare copy such as I have. Just watch the Spoony Experiment review of this film, it really goes through it and has a good laugh. It's more entertaining than the actual film. He knows something, so wait Bruce look out! When a doctor knives women. <laughs> Again, there's an unsettling plot in The Clones of Bruce Lee to kill off Bruce Lee on the set of a film using a real bullet, which is what they did on one of the Game of Death films. Uh, again, this was well over a decade before the real thing happened to Brandon Lee, Bruce Lee's son, on the set of The Crow. Crazy stuff. So yeah, as I say, those are the films that he did. Uh, just before he died basically in the last few years. Now I know there were other things as well, obviously there was the Green Hornet TV series which was pretty massive for him as well. And uh, I've never seen it though to be fair, I'm probably surprised I'm a big Batman fan, I like the 60s series as well and of course the Green Hornet tied in with that and it's done by the same people but I just never got around to watching it. But uh, like I said, these are the films that he did and I kind of briefly showed you in the little film there what um, the DVDs are that, of the films that I was talking about but just to kind of go into detail these are the, the versions that I got in the UK, so if you're watching this in the UK and you don't know which versions to get, because there's quite a lot of different 
reissues of these and different cuts and these are ones that I thought were the best so not kind of going into Blu-rays but just DVDs um, the big boss I think the best one to get is this two disc one that was uh, put out by um, I think it was Hong Kong Legends I mean, it was it says on the side actually Hong Kong Legends Platinum Edition so if you're thinking of getting this I think this is the best one to get it's got a lot of extra features as you can kind of see I kind of showed you on there but like I said if you look it up just look it up on Amazon or wherever that's the one so it's the Platinum Edition two disc version um, the next film, Fist of Fury, similar thing, Platinum Edition, it's done by Hong Kong Legends again and it's got a wealth of extra features spread across two discs, so that's Fist of Fury. The next one is Way of the Dragon, which is, well it's, I think it's Hong Kong Legends again, but this one is, it says Fortune Star Cine Asia Presents, oh no it does say Hong Kong Legends as well, Way of the Dragon, and this is the two disc Ultimate Edition, and again, there's a lot of extra features on there. Um, Enter the Dragon is slightly different because uh, it was done by Warner Brothers, as I say it was more of an American style film, so um, the version I think you want to get, this is the uncut version, as it says there, and uh, there's not a huge amount of extra features, I think it's just the one disc, yeah, oh, it's, well, no, there is. It's, it's, it's two sided, it's a double sided one, I think it's quite an old disc is this one, um, well put out in 2005, so that's the one that you want to get of that anyway. Um, Game of Death, if you want to own it, it's not a bad film, as I said in the video, I kind of covered it up, I won't kind of repeat myself. But again, done by Hong Kong Legends, Platinum 2 Disc Set. And there are a lot of extra features on this with interviews with some of the people he worked with. I didn't mention this in a lot of film, but um, George Lazenby, he was uh, James Bond, the second James Bond. Not everybody's favourite, but uh, I, I didn't mind him. But he was going to be in this film had it been had Bruce Lee not passed away. In fact, he was actually in talks with Bruce Lee um, literally a day, or, a day or two before he died. And he was due to meet him. Uh, if you haven't passed away, so um, there's a few interviews with him on, on this as well, so you get quite a bit of inside knowledge anyway. So again, that's just the Platinum 2 disc set with over three hours of bonus features. And again, it's got footage that was kind of, well, that you can just watch the footage that was filmed and not, you don't have to watch the film if you don't want to. Game of Death 2, um, this one is just called a Special Collector's Edition. I think this is just one disc. Yeah, just one disc single-sided and again it's put out by Hong Kong Legends. Most of these are, they seem to be the ones that uh, really kind of got their act together with releasing these and putting together with all the extras. Very good collection. And uh, <laughs> clones of Bruce Lee, yeah, you don't want that, trust me. Anyway, that's the review. I think in part two I'm going to be covering the, well this is in the background, the official story for the legendary martial artist, A Treasures of Bruce Lee book it's called. And uh, it's available in the UK, you can probably get it in America as well, probably, um, probably imported from there anyway. Um, we're going to have a look at that, it's got a lot of nice artefacts and I got it for my birthday this year so I thought it would be quite nice to share. I don't really have much else in terms of my collection for Bruce Lee to be honest. Um, it's something that I've more recently kind of got into, it's not something that I was into when I was younger, but somebody just kind of recently just kind of said, oh you should watch his films, they're pretty good, so uh, don't really have a lot else to show you, so it's just going to be a two part series this anyway. I did actually pick these up recently, these nunchucks, and um, I got them in a shop in Blackpool and it actually said uh, Bruce Lee nunchucks, so I actually had to ask the guy, I was like, how are these Bruce Lee, and he's like, oh it's got a dragon on it, it's like, well, that's not a dragon, that's a snake. So, you know, the whole Bruce Bloitation thing is still uh, in full force, you know, they're still trying to kind of cash in on his on his name and stuff. But um, I thought it was quite funny anyway. But yeah, I'm going to leave there and I'm kind of rambling now. So, uh, as I said, check back in part two and we will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.